This may be the best budget stove on eBay, but rather than take my word for it, let's take a closer look and I'll let you decide. Okay, before I assemble the stove for you, I just want to give you a little bit of background. So, as if you've been following my channel for any length of time, you know that I have a purchased and tested and demonstrated a good number of the budget stove that you can find on eBay, AliExpress, or some of the other uh, Chinese websites where you can purchase them from. Most of them are copies or at least or near clones or inspired by more successful designs made here in North America or in other parts of the world. Well, when I saw this stove starting to pop up on eBay and AliExpress, I, I couldn't identify it as something that had been made by somebody else. It looked like an original design. Now, I may be wrong, and I would invite anybody out there who can identify this as an original design that somebody else had come up with first, please let me know. But when I looked at it, I, I thought, I don't know. I've tested some stoves that I didn't think really stood up to the claims or didn't work out as well as I thought they might, but uh, the price was so good on this, I couldn't help but give it a try. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to assemble it. Here it is in its package state. I'm going to assemble it for you, and then I'll go over the statistics, and we'll build a small fire in it. Okay, here it is in its unassembled state in the package that it comes with, which is a inexpensive Kodura type material that is rubberized on the inside. It's fairly well manufactured. For the price point, it's actually quite good. What you get inside of here is the sew in five plates and two crossbars. Let me get the plates out. I'll put the two crossbars aside for a second. So very quickly, you'll see that this has a real resemblance to the Emberlet stove and some of the Chinese clones that have come up with. So it does assemble in a very similar fashion. Now, unlike the early Lixada stove that I had tried that assembled in separate plates, this one is designed properly so that the plates interlock and once they finally go together, it will not fall apart. If you'll recall, or if you've watched that video, and I will put a link up in the corner so you can go back and see some of those older videos of mine, I had purchased one of those inexpensive Lickstata stoves, and while I was using it, while there was a fire in it, the thing collapsed on me. So I was not happy with that. Now there is an updated version, which is hinged, which goes together much better. Uh, it still has some mixed reviews, but this is a different animal altogether. So to start with, it's an unbranded. There is no names on this at all. And as I looked at them on eBay and AliExpress, they had demonstrated them, or at least display them in two different fashions. And I said, which is the correct way? Well, I'm going to show you the correct way. So let's start by assembling it the same as you would any other stove or any other Emberlet stove or one of its clones. Trying to make sure you can get all of this on camera. So what I like to do is put the five pieces together and you can see how they interlock. Now, I will tell you, it is made of stainless steel but it's thin and quite flexible, and it does not lock in place until you get the final piece put in it. So you do have to be cautious when you're assembling this. I would normally do this on my lap. I'm gonna try and balance it on my knee here so that it doesn't fall apart because until you get the hang of it, it can fall apart on you while you're putting it together. There is the grill plate. You'll notice that there are tabs on three sides, but not on this side. So the side without the tabs is going to face the feed hole. So lining the tabs up, while I very carefully work this together. Can you see what I'm doing? Hopefully. And a little bit more fiddling. So yeah, it is, there we go. It is a little fiddly until you get it together. And once it's together, it feels loose and rattles a little bit, but it's not gonna fall apart. So it's it works together, it goes together quite well like that. Now there are two more pieces. Let me put this on my knee. Crossbars, small crossbars. And these are unique in design in that there are more than one little cut notches in it. I can show you there as well. And I'll show you what I think you can use those for. But let's put it on the stove the way it's intended to be used to start with, at least for wood burning. Okay. 
There we go. So it does go corner to corner. Um, I think primarily the use for this is for smaller cups. And I'll give you the dimensions in a, in a second, and I'll tell you what I've tried it out with and what I think works with it best. But if I have a smaller cup, like a, a GSI Glacier Cup, or I have done this with my Stanley Adventure Cup as well, if you don't put the crossbar on, they will start, they won't quite fit. In fact, the, the Stanley Adventure will want to slide down inside. And that may be okay because there is an alternative arrangement, which I'll show you in a second, for this. So let's start off with a few statistics. Where did I put my notes? So basically, it is a, this is the smallest of three sizes that I did see available. And I will provide links to where I purchased mine and other links on eBay where you may be able to get it. Um, it is, well, to start with, it weighs in, comes in at 5.2 ounces. So it's a very light weight. It is stainless steel, but it is thin stainless steel. It is 10 millimeters wide. The bird chamber area is. It's 10 millimeters wide right across here. And the total height of this runs in at 12 millimeters high. So that would be about not quite four inches wide and just over three and a quarter inches tall. So it's not a big stove. It's bigger than the Emberlet Fire Ant, but it's smaller than the original Emberlet stove. So it's one of those, well, I, actually, I kind of think it's in the sweet spot. Uh, there's some unique features of this stove, which I'll demonstrate to you, or show you now, and then I'll demonstrate in a few minutes. It has multiple slots for the grill plate, or, or the burn plate, on each of the sides. And experimenting with it, what I have discovered is I have it placed in the lowest to the bottom right now. That that's the best for using for wood, but you can lift it and put it in the center, and it gives a near perfect height for the Trangia stove if you put the plate on there. And you can put the plate at the top, and then you've got a spot which is much closer to the pot, which is great for Esbit or other hexamine tablets. So that's what I'm going to do is I'll set this up in a few minutes time and we'll put some wood in it. We'll, we'll get a little kettle on for some tea, but I wanted to show you a couple of ways of setting it up. So the crossbars, if you take them off because, and you don't need to use these, by the way, it does add some structural rigidity to it as well as span the distance so smaller pots are supported. But you could also set them down inside of the stove in a number of places. Now, if you can see, I'll point to it with my finger, there are slots in each of the panels all the way around. So what that provides is an option. See if I can do this. You can either go with two bars parallel. And what I'm doing right now is, if I can see what I'm doing, is setting the crossbars in so the slots on the bars itself are sliding into the slots on the plates. A little bit of fiddling sometimes to require to get this lined up. There's that one. And this one is now. Okay. So now you can see I've got the bars spanning over the stove, down from the top. And you could do this either in parallel or you could cross it. So it crosses either way. What that allows, I notice with my Stanley Adventure cook set, is for the pot to sit just inside of the top of the stove, so I'm down a little closer. Now, at that point, I'm probably going to have to put my Trangia on the bottom or other alcohol stoves on the bottom to, to get a, a good height, but, you know, still get some distance. Won't be able to use it in that center set of holes. But that works a little, quite well as well. Now, one more thing you can do with this is take those out again. So let's say I want to set it up for wood, but first I think I'll just have a cup of tea, use my Trangia for doing that. And I've got it set up so that the burn plate is on the bottom, and I don't want to have to take it all apart because it is a little bit fiddly. And now I want to set up, but I do want to use my Trangia. If I take these two bars, I can slide them in through the slots. And again, the notches will line up. Put the other one in, then I can show you. So now the bars are set inside that center set, slot, set of slots, and they will support the Trangia the same as the bottom plate would have been had I put it up there. Now, of course, this will mandate that I've got a pot that's larger than the span of the stove. So, uh, you know, the, this is a case where the, the Stanley Adventure and the GSI Catalyst and even the small titanium cups, the 750 mil cups, they won't sit on this the way it is. Well, I've got a larger one kettle I'm going to be using today for, for this demonstration. 
So one other thing, now I have not tried this because I don't think it's something I want to do, but I'll, I'll show you. One of the ways this has been demonstrated or at least presented on eBay is upside down. I'm not sure, I'm pretty sure whoever took the pictures, whoever assembled the stove for those ads had no idea how the stove was supposed to be used. However, if I put that plate now in the bottom set, it creates a new dynamic where uh, it'll still work. It'll still work. You can still use the crossbars up here on top. You have a shallower set of uh, pot stands here, but the stove will still work. How I just wanted to point that out because that you, if you see this on eBay demonstrated in that fashion, you're still looking at the right stove, but the correct way, in my opinion, to set it up is like this. Okay, now let's. Uh, we're going to set this up and have put some wood in it and get a get a little fire going so I can make myself a cup of tea. Uh, are there any downsides to it? Well, it is thin stainless steel. So what I've noticed after about a dozen fires is that it is starting to bow out a little bit on the sides. Uh, it hasn't fallen apart. There's still plenty of room for the tabs to project out so it'll still hold the plate in place. But what I discovered is is that it's quite flexible so if it starts to bow I can do one of two things. I can either bend it back into shape or just turn all the plates around so now the bowing is on the inside and it'll fit together much snugger that way. So it sh shouldn't burn out anytime soon. It seems to be very sturdy. I've used it with both alcohol and with wood in it. I'll tell you now at home some, some of my tests with using split cut hardwood with a top down burn and the chamber completely filled. I'm able to get a 15 minute burn time until flame out and then still coals for a little while light longer than that. I've also done some testing with alcohol. I have not tested this with Esbit but I have done some testing with alcohol and I'm able to get two cups of water uh, to a boil in just over, well, not quite six minutes. So I think it was 5, 550, 555, something like that, that I was able to do it. I'll put the, the results of that test in the show notes below. Uh, that was, of course, at home, not in minus six degrees Celsius, which is what it is out here in the woods today. Now, let's get it set up in the fire pit. I'll get some wood in it. We'll get the fire going, and I'll show you how it works. All right, so what I've done is I've preloaded the stove with a little bit of birch bark on the bottom and some broken spruce twigs, twigs on top. And off to the side, I've split out some well, dry, punky looking maple that was sitting here in the snow. Hopefully I've split it into some drier stuff in the, in the center. And I'm going to give it a bottom up burn today, just lighting the birch bark. Hopefully it's not too wet. And uh, once I see that the sticks are catching on, then I'll start adding some of the hardwood and we'll put the kettle on. So you get a, at least a demonstration of how this stove works. So nice thing about a small stove like this is you can pick it up and hope that your birch bark isn't so wet that it won't catch. Uh, I can hear the sizzling now. All right. And I can even hold it at a bit of an angle to help the flames rise more straight up. There we go, it's catching on now. Let that start to work its way up for a minute or two. I think I need to put it in a little bit more stable position. Everything's a little slower in the winter time when it's cold out. Small stoves, my, my general opinion is, is that small stoves are not a good option for the winter because they just don't have the dynamic or the size to reach a critical mass of heat to be self-sustaining. This is on the border of being too small. Now, when I say that, there's always exceptions. That's true. But most of the time, I prefer larger wood stoves in the winter because I can get more heat generated. There's a critical mass that goes along with that. I may as well see if I can add a few sticks on top of it. One of the things I noticed about this stove is airflow. It has great airflow from the bottom plates and through the front. There are no real holes around the outside of it other than the bottom and that, that large feet hole in the front. So it doesn't catch air from all the way around, but it does seem to draft very well through the front and the bottom. One concern you may have with this, and it's, it, this is true of any stove that doesn't have a bottom plate, and even if it does, is that if you're working on a surface that is combustible, you may want to put something underneath it. 
uh, here the ground is soaking wet and frozen so I'm not too concerned about I'm not concerned about it at all but in another place I may put it on stone uh, I could even put it on a piece of a few pieces of larger wood and just keep an eye on it Ooh, sizzling sizzling means wet keep going don't go out of me All right, we're going to work on this for a few minutes time and make sure that this wood catches. <laughs> yeah, I probably should make sure that there was no ice on some of this wood. It'll catch. It's just going to take a little bit of time. There, it's coming back now. And once, the, once it's well established, I can put the pot on. And as you can see, there's a good size feed hole, so I can get some good long sticks in here. Although most of the, well, all the sticks I have are like this right now. All right, I think that's probably good to put the pot on. And because of the pot stand design, or the top of the stove design, excellent airflow at the top. So the pot doesn't really dampen the fire down at all, which means that it's not going to uh, put it out or, or, you know, dampen the fire and create a lot of smoke. There is smoke now because the wood is wet. But, uh, yeah, it seems to be working quite well. All right, I'm going to be making myself a cup of tea out of this water, but once I'm finished, we'll wrap the video up. So I changed my mind on the tea because it was a little later than I thought it was and decided to put uh, my dehydrated soup on instead, which is cooking away nicely here. And I thought I'd just give you an indication of the way I'm using the stove. Uh, what's nice about the way the pot stand is arranged is I can lay sticks crosswise and still put the pot back on and as they burn they fall down into the flames as well as feed them up through the bottom as you would normally with an ember lit or any number of wood stoves that allow you to feed it from the side and from the bottom. I could be feeding longer sticks but this is what the way I had them cut right now. So it's been working very well. Uh, I'm impressed when I add, uh, that soup looks almost ready, great. When I add cold, wet wood, that it takes a minute or two, but there's sufficient airflow to allow the coals to heat the cold, wet wood up to a point where they will combust. And the stove is stable enough for my Uberlieben Kessel pot kettle. All right, now I'll have lunch instead of tea, then we'll close the video up. Okay, it occurs to me that I sh said I would show you how the Trangia fits in the stove, but didn't actually do it. So why don't we do that now? So you can see I have the bars set up at the height as suggested, the middle set of slots that would be a good height for the Trangia. So here's my Trangia. Actually, it's a Trangia clone from Alox. And it's setting inside. You can see it inside there on those two bars and it gives me one and a quarter inches to the top of the pot stand and you know I really like that height it is the best for me at least in my testing it is the best balance between speed of bringing water to a boil and fuel efficiency if I set it a little lower I might slow the speed down a little bit and I would also save a little bit of fuel and if I raise it a higher I can probably speed the boil up but it goes through the alcohol a little bit faster. Now that depends on the stove and other circumstances I understand that but I really like the height that this provides right there hopefully you can see it inside of there and one the other thing I like about the way the cutouts here other than airflow, is I can reach inside and I can still use the simmer ring on top of that. I wonder if I can show you that. Get the simmer ring up here. So I can either use it to snuff it out quite easily, or I can open the simmer ring up, set it on, and still have good clearance to the top of the pot stand for slow simmering of anything that I wanted to cook. So it's almost ideally built for a Trangia stove. Okay, some final thoughts on this little budget stove from eBay. What do I like about it? Number one, the price. <laughs> I, you can't beat it. And I'll put the price that it's currently selling at on eBay and AliExpress in the show notes below. But it, it's got to be the cheapest one out there. 
What else do I like about it? Well, I do like the fact that, to the best of my knowledge, it's not a copy, it's not of anybody else's design, so it's not taking advantage of all the research and development that someone else did in the design of the stove. Uh, it's, it's got some elements that look similar to an ember lid. It's got elements that look similar to the Bushcraft Essentials Bush Box stoves. But I think it's different enough that I'll say it's, it's an original design, maybe inspired by a combination of factors from those other stoves. What else do I like about it? The size is just about perfect. I don't think I'd want to go any smaller during the winter. And quite honest, it's large enough during the summer to do everything I needed to. What are the downsides? Well, it's thin stainless steel, so it is warping ever so slightly, but not enough to make it dangerous. It's still holding together just fine. One of the big, uh, one of the upsides of thin stainless steel is it cools off very quickly after you're finished using it, and you can pack it away and get ready to go on the on the trail. It is. Uh, it does take a bit of feeding of wood. Now, I was able to maximize the amount of wood I can get in this, even for the demonstration. Hopefully, you caught that. But with a, a filled up chamber of top down burn hardwood, to get 15 minutes of good solid fire before it turns to coals, uh, that's more than enough for just about anything I'm cooking on in the stove. If I don't load it that way and I feed it in through the side, I do have to push sticks in, but that's true of any stove, especially the small ones. Yeah, overall, I will say that this, in my opinion, is the best budget stove on eBay. But I'd be interested in hearing what you think of this stove, if you have any experience with it, if you can see any downsides to it, put them in the comment section below. All right, until next time, get out and explore, and take that path less traveled. It'll make all the difference. Bye for now.